Here you can see the mass lateral to the right arterial brachiocephalic artery. but if you can touch it, if you can touch it, maybe you can do it in in your office even or or in, or by hand. So uh, Dr. Castaño wants a biopsy first uh, before uh, consideration of anything, especially since this is in a pre-irradiated field, I think, right, Wilfredi? Yes, Dr. Bright. And of course, we have a, a previous previous tumor. So I want to know if it's a metastatic one, if it's a primary one, and of course, it's a difficult place to go to surgery. Symptom that, uh, uh, that the patient has. Can you describe it again and can you explain it, uh, Luis? Par me. When the patient uh, swallows, they cough. Yes, yes. It was it, it was the main symptom for the patient. When he swallows, he he coughs. He was uh, no. uh, of course inter uh, was uh, interpreted as a as a um, as a reflux uh, the disease and. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, and he had an endoscopy many months ago, and but that was the main symptom. Later, because uh, because that symptom it corresponds to uh, maybe a tract esophageal fistula. That yeah. with that mass in that point, it can be a paralysis of the, the recurrent lattice nerve because there's going by, there's turning by the the right one. Behind the subclavian, the right subclavian artery is going down the, the right lateral nerve, so it can be a, a paralysis. Maybe it's, it's good to have an evaluation of the lorry folds also. Maybe you're going, maybe there's a paralysis of the right one, and that's the it cause happens. of the cough with the even with the salivate with saliva. The, but the patient, but the patient uh, had no uh, hoarseness or or any um, a speaking symptom really. So, but but a good his, point. His voice was very very clear. Uh, really, really, doctor, I I have this, this patients who the only symptom is the problem with, with swallowing and without any problem with the voice. Uh, with paralysis of the vocal cord. And I think it's one thing, because that is the main symptom, it's uh, one thing uh, you can you can think about. Uh, of course, the tract esophageal fistula in a, in a pre irradiated patient, it's the main uh, possible problem, but it's another option. Okay, I, I, I never th I never thought about uh, uh, the possibility that possibility of tracheosophageal fistula really uh, I never thought about that, but th that's a good point. It could be it could be a a, a good point. Doctor I, I, Yes, Adrianita. I I would like to know if you have some blood markers. Uh, because of the uh, of the previous seminoma in this patient. Yes, yes, the the patient the patient had uh, all the 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 the, the markers uh, for the biomarkers for semi, for uh, mediastinal uh, germinal tumors that was negative and they they been negative for uh, the last uh, twenty years really because he, uh, he had. Uh, uh, follow up of the of the um, 
oncologist. Of, of, of his, uh, with the oncologist. And when he started the symptoms, the first thing he did was to go to the oncologist and he ordered that. And he was the one who ordered the CAT scan, uh, the initial CAT scan that I show you, and where the, that node, that paratracheal node was not seen. So I ordered him uh, the ultrasound biopsy. And it yeah, was. I, I, I agree with you. But the, the last question before <laughs> your your answer is is how dense is the mass in in Hounsfield Uni? It's very dense. Okay. It's, it's okay. A, yeah, I am. It's a dense ma a mass at the at okay. the CAT scan. The ultrasound guided biopsy that was really easy to to perform. Uh, uh, reported a neurogenic tumor with atypia. So, of, uh, of course, having the, the, this, uh, this pathology report and the symptoms of the patient, uh, I, uh, I, I, I thought that it was a, a tumor of the nervous, uh, of, of the vagus nerve, uh, because of the same symptoms, really, and I, I um, uh, offer him the surgical resection, warning him that maybe uh, it, it, he would be with a vocal cord paralysis uh, in the postoperative uh, for the patient. So he mm -hmm. agreed mm -hmm. to go with the with the surgery, and now. What surgical approach would you recommend for this patient? Cervical sternotomy, sternotomy, right thoracotomy, right bats, right rats. Can we look at the could CT? Could you please show us the CT scan for a while? Again? Yes. Yes. Oh. Just a second. Okay. Are you uh, are you seeing my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here you can see the mass lateral to the right arterial brachiocephalic artery. Well, my approach would be bad, right bad. This kind of tumor you see encapsulated and easy to remove. Okay. Adriana. I agree with Adriana. I agree with you. It may be bad, but maybe you will need also a surgical approach. You can do uh, up up for the above the subclavia, the, cla the clavicle. Sorry, above the clavicle for pulling up. Maybe you have to, you need it, or maybe you can do it entirely by that. Okay. Maybe I Anyone? can call the vascular surgeon to be in the in the room. Anyone suggest any other approach? Luis, obviously a sternotomy would be a very nice approach to this. Um, I think that would be my preferred open approach, but I think I would tackle this with a right robotic thoracoscopy. Okay. And. I, I I thought I thought the the right thoracoscopy uh, approach, the VATS approach, right VATS approach, but uh, studying the, the the location, the real location of the mass that uh, was uh, that that went a lot into the into the neck, 
very, very proximal, I really decide to do, I decide to do a partial snotomy. The, and this was the, the approach uh, I chose. I did a, a partial sternotomy. I felt very, very uh, comfortable with the approach. Here you can see the nominate vein. With this forceps, you can see the, the mass going to the neck. And remember that the mass went down at a track, right at a tracheal. And after the, the removal of the mass, you can see here all the space where was the mass behind the nominate vein, right to the, to the uh, brachiocephalic artery, and going to the lower part of the of the nominate vein and para, right paratracheal. So this was the approach I used. I, I really felt very comfortable. Uh, I think that uh, when I was planning the surgery, the, uh, uh, I thought that the, the approach of the upper part of the tumor by bats could be very difficult. And, and, it, and I think right now that it would, it, it would be really difficult because when I, uh, when I got the, the upper part of the, of the, of the tumor, that was pending from the neck, from the vagus nerve, really that, that was the real origin of the tumor, the, the vagus nerve, and it would be very difficult by, by bats. That, that's my, my thought right now. I don't know what you think with, with, this, uh, with this approach. Luis, I like your approach. I have a question. Did you actually identify the vagus nerve and the recurrent nerve? and separated from the nerve? Yes, I, I could identify the, the laryngeal recurrent nerve and uh, try to spare, but the, the very beginning of the, of the tumor was the, ne the vagus nerve. So I had to cut the vagus nerve and, that, and, and then the, 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 the recurrent laryngeal nerve was compromised. So you cut the vagus nerve above the innominate. Yes. yes, yes. I cut the, the, the vagus nerve just here uh, at very, where you see the right subclavian artery. One other, one other quick question. Did you also do a complete thymectomy because of the patient's old history of kind of uh, a mediastinal tumor? I, I didn't touch the thymus. You you can see here the the uh, the thymic remnants, and I didn't touch it, really. Great case. Any questions? Oh, okay. So this is the tumor. You can see here the tumor. You can see here the how it was how it was located. You see at the upper part the. Uh, the, a little segment of the, of the vagus nerve that, that that can see here that can, that can see here at the at the most upper part of the tumor that was a, a, it was a little segment of the vagus nerve. It's a oval shaped tumor. It, it it seemed very well encapsulated, and this was the the. The surgical approach. I left here a, 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 a black drain through the neck. At the second day, at the second postoperative post day, the patient had atrial fibrillation. Maybe, maybe because of the of the uh, of the cutting of the vagus nerve. And it was controlled with antiarrhythmic, and he didn't he, uh, he didn't need uh, anticoagulants. 
And the pathology shows us a malignant tumor of the peripheral nerve sheath, 6.1 centimeters, grade two of sarcomas classification, unifocal with a mitotic index of 22 in 10 fields, 15% of necrosis, and the proximal margin, the margin in the vagus nerve with tumor, and four mediastinal leaf nodes free of tumor. So we have a clearly a radio, radio induced uh, sarcoma of the mediastinum, depending on the vagus nerve with a positive margin. And what do you recommend? Adjuvancy, chemo, radiotherapy, I, I really like think to... for sarcomas that it is possible and it is the best option is to go for it in surgery again. That's the first possibility. To, to, to do more surgery, Wilfredi? Yes, this is the proximal tumor, the proximal margin, so is the vagus. So you, the first option always in sarcomas if it is possible for the patient, for the margin, uh, it's the best thing you can do is to go for it and get to a negative margin. That's my approach. I may, if I may, I want to ask you further. What would you do at the time of surgery? What would you do at what house? No, if, uh, if we did take this patient back to get negative margin, what would you yeah. do extra? I think it would be difficult to identify what exactly is the margin of this tumor. Is it, uh, you know, just take a little bit more of the vagus nerve or actually resect the innominate artery and vein and, uh, and go down to the trachea and take out the... I'm thinking about it because doctors say that it was the proximal margin. So maybe the proximal margin is the place where the, the tumor forms, that is the vagus nerve as I heard. So maybe you can go for the vagus nerve. I think it's very important to talk with the pathologist to see really, really which was the proximal margin compromise. If he say that it's a proximal margin, it has to be marked before. So maybe Dr. Luis Garcia knows where he put that mark. And of course, he is the one who knows if it is possible to do a uh, re resection over that place. Of course, in the vagus, of course, if it is a vascular place, no. Uh, that's what I say, if it is possible, if the patient can go again, uh, if, that, if it's anything that you can re resect, first option is to resect. If not, uh, of course, uh, the other else. I think there's a question. Uh, somebody wants to ask a question. What's the question? I, I, uh, I think it's I think it's very difficult to go uh, for the proximal resection. I I for me was a surprise uh, to have uh, um, the um, the compromise of the of the vagus nerve with tumor, but. Uh, I think that, that it's very difficult to go for that, as I've asked uh, Wilfredi. I, I, I think it's not very easy uh, to, me, to explore the neck and, and, and go for the, that segment of the virus. Uh, that's, that's what I think also. Dr. Saldarriaga, do you have a, a question? Hi. Uh, good morning for everyone. <clears throat> nice presentation <clears throat> of a difficult case, Dr. Garcia. I would like to add uh, my opinion is this patient is not uh, for surgery. This patient is for uh, chemo and immunotherapy uh, at Juan. You are uh, doing the best effort uh, for this patient and go back go, came back to surgery is not a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Carlitos. 
Dr. Garcia, do you have uh, records of the previous radiation therapy and the mapping? I think it would be worth, yeah. No, no, Abbas, the, the patient came back from Boston many years ago and, and he didn't went back, so uh, we don't have records of, of, the, of, the, of the radiation fields for this patient. Okay, um, I think... let's uh, kind of see, uh, um, can we do reactions on the Zoom? Uh, who advocates for more surgery? You can do a thumbs up. <laughs> that works. Uh, what, one question that I had for you is, once you have a, a a radiation induced sarcoma. How, how possible is to again make radiotherapy for the patient? I, I think that that could be, but I don't know if it if it could be the best. So, and and you know that now we don't have any chemotherapy approved really with good results for this kind of sarcoma. So, so my, my preference for this patient is to observe and, he ha and if he has a, um, uh, a uh, newly the, the, the tumor, we could reoperate him having a tumor or, uh, or think in, in, in radiotherapy again for him, but having a, a, a tumor for him. So that I, I don't know if, if, if you agree with me. That's okay. an interesting question. What do you think, Dr. Eriarte? I think that, um, I think that um, once you have the, the sarcoma, um, the preferred approach is to treat it like as a de novo disease, and uh, if you have to do radiation because of the because of the positive margin, uh, I think it's a way to treat it. Even though uh, you think it's radio induced, and you know uh, that could be the origin, I think that is is um, it is feasible to do it. As Doctor Abbas uh, mentioned, you will have to get the mapping and and what kind of radiation the patient received before, just to take into account the morbidity of radiation therapy, not because of, um, not because of concern of, of, of inducing another radio-induced sarcoma. But I think that if you have positive margin, the preferred approach would be to do radiotherapy. In my opinion, I agree with Luis. It's very difficult to go back. You might get a piece of Vegas that's called negative, but what did you really accomplish? Uh, yes. I'm not sure that you really accomplished your goal here. I actually like the observation route, and that's what I probably would do in this situation, because I am sure the patient has had uh, radiation that uh, overlapped in this area. There's actually very little evidence that repeat radiation has an effect. And, and although the, we do it, and they bring it up, and they say sometimes it works, there's no strong evidence, I've quizzed them on this, uh, that repeat radiation helps in any situation. And, uh, and then the, 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 the final point is I have personally several um, examples of radiation-induced sarcomas. And in, unfortunately, they tend to be uh, very um, uh, difficult to get a negative margin on. I had a small chest wall tumor that looked like three centimeters, but then we ended up going maybe 15 or, or more centimeters just to get a negative margin at the time of surgery. So did you consider getting a frozen section at the time of surgery of those margins? Excuse me, I have a question, please. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Garcia. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, um, uh, how long uh, the, surgical, the surgery was done? And I wonder if obtain uh, one image again, maybe MRI for rollout, uh, one remanent uh, approach well in surgery. I don't know. The, the surgery wa was done 
on May 25th, about a month and a half ago. And my, my, and my plan is make a close uh, follow-up of him uh, with uh, maybe, maybe with MRI in the next three months just to see if we have a recurrence of the tumor in the neck, basically, where, where, where I think it could be the, the, the main uh, place for recurrence. So uh, that's, the, that's what I expect with, with the patient. Thank you. Well, it, this was an excellent case, uh, Luis. How's the patient doing? Symptoms? No, he's, he is doing very well. Of course, he's, uh, he has a vocal cord paralysis uh, with hoarseness, uh, but, but he's doing very well. He's, uh, you know, uh, uh, these uh, partial sternotomy are very well tolerated uh, approach. Uh, the, the, it's, it, it's, not a, uh, it's not a painful surgery. And he was for four days at, at, at hospital the the event of the of the atrial fibrillation uh, didn't recur, so he's doing doing very well and he's working right now uh, with his hoarseness, of course, but but he's doing very well. You still have the symptom of coughing after he swallows? No, 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 no. That that symptom disappeared. And you sent him for medialization of the cord. <laughs> yes, yes, I. I, I sent him uh, uh, to the to the uh, to the otorhinolaryngologist for uh, for working in that, and and he will have a he will have a surgery on his vocal cords, and and maybe his hoarseness will will improve. I think. I mm -hmm. I had uh, I have a a um, just. A, um face. just some words of radiation induced sarcoma uh you, we know that our rare heterogenic malignancy with poor prognosis compared with with common soft tissue sarcomas and the principles for diagnosis of a radi radio induced sarcoma are the history of radiation exposure uh, before the development, the development of sarcoma near the field of radiation, and co to confirm a sarcoma by histology and uh, completely different of the of the primary primary tumor that was the subject of the of the radiation. The the um, the time the 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 time for the the induction is between 15 and 20 years, like in this patient. And it's, uh, the most frequent cases of radiation induced sarcoma are after breast cancer with uh, uh, an incidence of 0.02%. Of uh, it's it's, it's a, a very low incidence with a survival after radiation induced sarcoma and breast cancer at five years of only 36%. Uh, there are other uh, uh, tumors that are, that has um, uh, increased risk as in anal, brain, and oropharyngeal carcinoma. And there is no clear relation with the dose of radiation, really, where the, the patient uh, doesn't have to have a, a high dose of radiation to develop the, the induced sarcoma. So these are the things that all of this, uh, uh, the criterion uh, are in this patient. So I expect just that uh, with a close follow-up of the patient and, and, and the, the therapy in, in the perfect moment, we could increase the survival of this, this very young patient with this problem. So this, this was the case that I wanted to show you, but just, don't leave the room, please, because I want you to help me in this case. 